Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. This is a quick addendum to the video I did a couple weeks ago about refurbishing the Wico Command Control joysticks, which are these guys. Now this one, which is marked number two, which means it was plugged into port two, and thus was the most used on the Commodore 64, had a problem where if you're bearing really hard to the right, that trigger wouldn't work. So, uh, since I'd already done all the other work, I decided to dig into that today to see if I could figure out why. So, let's get right to that and see if we can't fix it. So, you remember a few weeks ago, we looked at repairing these uh, Wico Command Control joysticks. Put a new centering bushing in one and cleaned it up and showed you how to adjust the leaf switches inside. Well, I noticed that on this particular one, which is one of the ones I had as a kid, uh, when I was playing Jumpman and I went all the way to the right hand side, that fire button didn't work anymore. So I got to looking at it and what was happening is that, you know, in the middle of being excited and playing and you whip this thing over to the side, you kind of have a tendency to pull up a little bit. And it was uh, pulling this domed piece, which is what hits the, the switch for the fire button here on the, the bat handle, um, it would pull that dome away from the switch contacts a little bit. And that made all the difference in the world, so I got to wondering why. You'll notice that this joystick has a number one sticker on it, which means that this one has a number two sticker. And all of you Commodore fans will know that most games were set up to use the number two joystick port for some reason. Maybe because it was the lowest memory address. I don't know, but most did. And after one occasion where either my sister or I uh, blew one of the CIAs by static electricity with unplugging and plugging in a joystick, we got a second joystick, and my dad put these stickers on them, and we kept them plugged in, And but we know which was which because of the stickers. So I took it apart. I took the bat handle out of the little box that the works goes in. Here is our bat handle assembled outside of the little box it's normally in. And right in here is a little spring. So we've got E-clip, the plastic ball, spring, big washer, centering grommet. And you notice that there is a little space between the spring coils and you can see right here where the spring is kind of, uh, this spring wrap is overlapping the one below it. So it's kind of going over it instead of uh, filling up the whole area. Now I originally thought this spring was to add some compliance, but then realized that the rubber bushing is going to do all that. So what this is really here for is to take up any manufacturing tolerance between the, the bushing and the washer and the plastic knob and the slot in the shaft. So, uh, you know, comparing this to the joysticks, it still worked fine. It was obvious this spring was kind of shot. Now I went back and I looked at the place, uh, the website where I bought these centering bushings, and lo and behold, they also have the springs, and they were less than a, a dollar, but I didn't want to, you know, buy a part for a dollar and spend five dollars or something shipping it. So I went and looked in my junk box to see what I could find. What I found was this spring. It was about the same inner diameter and the thickness of the wire here was about the same. So it should have a similar uh, spring constant. And I cut off a piece that looked to be about the right length and then test fit it and kept trimming off a little more until I got the right fitment. So if we look at how this one works, if I pull on it, you can see there is a little give there, and that's not what we want. Take that E-clip off. Here's the original, and you see it's kind of bent and dilapidated, and while this new one seems shorter, it's stiffer, 
You can't really tell on camera, but this is stiffer. But otherwise, they are pretty similar. Okay, so now we'll assemble it with the new spring. And remember, oops, knock, oh, one thing I forgot to show you here. You can tell how much this was used as number the number two joystick as the big metal washer has worn a slight groove around there. It's just enough to feel so that's maybe two, maybe three thousandths of an inch. You can just barely feel it. So put this back together. Put that part down like that, that part like that. This is so much harder to do on camera. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now you'll accept where I kind of bent that part of the coil out so it didn't fall down in the hole in the washer. You notice that it takes up all the space there, so there's no slack. And if I pull on it, the only thing that's moving is the centering bushing, which is what we want. So this is acting just like the other joysticks. And another thing I noticed uh, when this original spring was in here, I can grab hold of this handle and rotate this really easily. And with the new spring in here, this can still be rotated, but it's pretty stiff. And this is similar to the other joysticks. You can just rotate the bat, but there's a good deal of friction. So now, Well, how about that? I broke a wire off here because I've been fiddling around with this thing so much. So, I'll get this other trigger switch back on here and get our broken wire fixed. So, well, I hope this shot comes out clear enough that you can see it. But they've run the wire through both pins here. This is a, a double pull, double throw switch. So I'm going to try to try the desolder again and see if we can get that big blob of solder out of there. Oh, well, that helped out. I'll try to there's, grab it where it's sticking out of this side. Okay. Kind of dab a paste flux on that guy. There we go. Which is this way, it's on the base fire button, which is this wire. So we want the switch in that way. There we go. I'm pulling on the bat handle now and I can't separate it from the switch leaf there. So that seems to have done the job. Oh, now we need to put on our masking tape spacers. This camera likes to automatically turn on build in white which is kind of annoying here we go when you're using the joystick you hear it kind of make a, a groaning popping sound that's this box being a little loose in there and three or four or five layers of masking tape on the corners We'll let the bottom cover put more pressure on that and keep it from doing that. 
Okay. You want to make sure that none of your wires are over the post there because that's they'll get squished. on there like okay there we go counterclockwise part of a turn until it drops in start clockwise thing I also replaced the rubber feet on all three of these joysticks and I found these are exactly the same size and shape as the ones used on the Commodore 64 itself and I went looking around and I bought a whole pile of these from the manufacturer and I will have those up on my website here shortly I'll put a link to these on my website and the replacement springs from the place I bought the centering grommets I'll put that link down there too so my suggestion would be that if you're going to replace the centering grommet in these, go ahead and order that spring and replace it at the same time because the spring is inexpensive and you don't want to not have it when you need it. Okay, look, we got everything set up. I was cleaning up some of my stuff the other day and I found several of these Epix fast load cartridges. So we're going to try one out here. And I know there's some shortcut keys when you've got this in there, but I'm going to do the old fashioned. Typing it all out. And I know I used to have a jet load cartridge back in the day, which was like a generic uh, Epix fast load. It was just the circuit board, didn't even have the case, it was that cheap, and there's a lot of games that didn't work on it. So I had written across the top of the, the disc, no jet load. So. Jump in. See how long this takes to load this way. Wow, that was really, really fast. We'll do a randomizer. One player. Oh, this is so much faster. Oh, yeah. So that's where I first noticed it was right on this Robots 2 level. It moves like that, and I would just fall down. Nope. Oh, I was relaxed, leaning back there, out of frame, and playing jump in. Look, we got this guy fixed. Oh no! That was either me or it was the joystick. I might blame the joystick, but it was probably me. Oh no! Hmm. Might still have a bit of a glitch there. Just wanted to show you here that I adjusted this bottom leaf. So it angled down to make sure it stayed in contact with the, the dome there. And then I adjusted this top leaf. So there is about a millimeter and a half gap there rather than two millimeters. So we'll try that out and see how it does. Okay, now we're back. Let's try it again. Just going to get down to the bottom here and try. Yep. If I go really hard to the... Okay, back to the drawing board. Well, this is our rather poor camera angle. But I don't want to tear apart the bench again, just to do another simple test. But I noticed that with it like this, if I go all the way this way, which is um, to the left, watch that very plastic box. You see how it's hardly moving? If I go all the way to the right, it really slips up out of the 
hole there and you can hear that creaking sound when you're playing. So I'm guessing maybe the fit on this side where that box goes down in isn't fitting so well. And even though I've got my tape on here, it's not keeping enough pressure down on that side. So I will investigate that here for a few minutes and we'll try something else. So what I did is I colored this post with some pencil lead and then I put it back together and looked to see how it pushed on the tape here, my spacers, and it was just barely making an impression. So then I doubled the tape up and did it again and it made a good impression. So that told me that I didn't quite have enough uh, spacer in there and given that the tape kind of will compress a bit um, that made sense so I basically doubled up the tape the blue tape is some more it's about a millimeter and a half spacer in there so I'll put it back together now and we'll try Jumpman again and see how that goes somehow at this point I managed to shut off the microphone so we'll just do a quick voice over here I tried Jumpman again and found out that it's better. The little box inside the joystick doesn't creak and groan, but still if you're bearing hard to the right you can still miss a jump because that trigger switch doesn't work. So back to the drawing board, we'll take it apart and look at it yet again. Well I took the joystick apart again and I tweaked that leaf switch a little bit and played Jumpman again and had a great game and here I am bragging about it and the microphone is still shut off so you can't hear me. But you can kind of prove it there because I get to type in my high score and it's like number four and those are my high scores from 30 years ago so yeah I felt pretty good about that. Now I'll show you what we did to fix the joystick. The final part of the puzzle turned out to be the shape of the bottom leaf on that trigger contact. So here we have the shaft and then we have the dome that presses on the leaf switch. And we have the bottom leaf and the top leaf. So part of the problem is that that dome isn't quite hemispherical. So as it uh, rotates or pivots, a different part of that bottom leaf is touching the dome so it's depressed or it moves that leaf a different amount which causes problems. I could also feel a slight ridge or wear along that dome where the switch had been contacting so for all the years and thousands of hours of use it wore a little bit too. So here's another view of the leaf contacts on the switch. There's the top leaf which is just straight that's the one that we adjust to get the gap that we want. And then there's the bottom leaf. And what I did is I bent a little hook or curve on the end of that, sort of like is shown in my crude picture here. And that just allowed the uh, dome to make contact closer to the same area and uh, keep that gap consistent no matter which way you had the joystick moved. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We got the Port 2 joystick working, and I had one of my best games of Jumpman in many years. It just took a little determination and some detective work to figure out what the problem was and devise some solutions to take care of that. Allow me to do a freeze frame here because of some other technical difficulties with the recording. We did get my old port 2 joystick fixed up and adjusted to account for all the wear from over the years. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Look down below for the rectangular subscribe button and mash on that guy. When you do that, you'll see a bell-shaped icon appear. If you click on that, you'll be notified just as soon as I post a new video. I sure would appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments or other thoughts, just leave them in the comment section down below. I would like to hear from you. Thanks a lot, and until next time, bye.